Hey there, I'm Alex with Level Up Plus VFX, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this flaming axe using Keen Tools GeoTracker and Embergen in Blender. Let's jump right into the tutorial, shall we? Installing GeoTracker is just like installing any other plugin. Go to Edit, Preferences, go to the Add-ons section, and click Install. Next, we're gonna to wanna to open up GeoTracker. You can type in Geo, and you'll get the interface, Kin Tools, Face Builder, and GeoTracker. And go ahead and make sure you install the dependencies will be available down here in the online version you'll get a 30-day free trial during this beta and it is awesome so i highly recommend you take full advantage of it once you've created this geo tracker node you'll have two missing options which is your clip and your camera use the eyedropper to select the camera you've added into your scene and set your focal length if you don't know it go ahead and check estimate focal length then if you know the sensor width and height of your camera go ahead and type in those but usually default is just fine. Finally, we need to add in our clip, click on the folder icon, select your footage, and scroll to the bottom and make sure the whole sequence is selected. Once you've loaded that in, if you look through your camera, you should see your footage in the background. You can see that my axe head is already lined up with your footage, but don't worry, if it's not, we can do that using the pin mode. For faster tracks, also make sure you analyze your footage. According to the add-on, this analyzes your footage and pre-calculates a file to make tracking faster. However, I still found my tracking was fairly slow, but your mileage may vary. My footage is in 4K after all. Once you've finished analyzing, go ahead and click Start Pin Mode and you'll get a wireframe of your axe. Go ahead and click anywhere on your axe to create a pin and orient it correctly until you feel like it's set. Personally, I already have it aligned, so I'm pretty good, but it's always good to set a couple pins just in case for when you need to adjust it later in the future. Now that we're done, we can go down to the bottom here and click Track to Start. If your track starts slipping like it did here for me, this is where you really get to take advantage of these pins. On the frame where it starts slipping, go ahead and grab one of your pins and drag it back into place. You can also click anywhere on your mesh to create a new pin if you need more control. Once your axe is in a position that you feel is more aligned, go ahead and click the refine button, which will reinterpolate the keyframes that you set earlier. Once you refine your track, it should create a more smooth animation throughout your entire thing, and you can continue tracking backwards. Do this until your entire track is complete. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep this tracked area as all I need, and I'm gonna show you how to export it into Embergen. Scroll down to the scene option and open it up. At the bottom, you'll see an option that says either camera or geometry. Make sure geometry is checked and click export. This will create a new empty in your scene that follows the track of your object. Let's go ahead and exit pin mode and then we're just gonna duplicate our cube. You can see that the duplicate still has keyframes, so I'm gonna go ahead and select those and click delete to delete them. I'm then gonna go into the object properties, create one keyframe on this frame and go to my empty and copy those keyframes. Once I've copied them, I can paste them on my copy geometry and it should still line up with the rest of my footage. This is basically baking the animation into keyframes so I can export it as an FBX, which is what we're gonna do next. Do File, Export, and choose FBX. Make sure Selected Objects Only is enabled, scroll to the bottom, and in the Bake Animation settings, make sure Force Start End Keyframe is unchecked. Then go ahead and export your FBX. And now it's time to jump into Embergen. In Embergen, what I'm going to do is use a preset. So I'm going to go over to the presets section and I'm going to choose this fire torch preset. Given I want this axe to basically look like this, I thought this was a perfect preset for my scenario. I've always been impressed by how high quality these presets in Embergen are. I just love them. But here's the problem. This is a log and we want it actually to be our axe. So how do we add it? In our node graph, right click and choose import. Then load in your FBX file. You'll see that we now have a mover cursor on our screen and we have just this tiny little axe in our scene. We want it a little bit bigger than that, so let's go ahead and go to the master scale option and set it to 10. This makes the axe a little too big, but that's fine. We're now just gonna move it until it fits inside our boundary box. Now that we have it in a spot we like, we can go ahead and use the geometry node and replace the actual shape primitive here. Playing through our scene now, we can see that the axe is the thing on fire but it keeps on clipping outside of the bounding box, so we need to change the size of that. In Embergen, the way you control the bounding box size is in the simulation size node. For me, it was really confusing when first learning, but basically the voxel count is just changing the size of the bounding box. Think of the voxel count as just the bounds of your bounding box. So for X, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 250, and for Y, I'm gonna also set it to 250. 
I'm gonna click apply resolution and it's gonna change the size of the bounding box. I also probably wanna bring my ax head just a little bit down so the fire doesn't clip on the top. Let's go ahead and play that back. It looks like it's still clipping a little bit on the Y axis as I push out the ax. So let's go ahead and increase this to 300 and see what happens. There we go, that looks much better. Now before we export, we need to do one more thing in the simulation node, which is the time control. The time steps are by default set to 60 hertz, but we need them to be set to 24 to match our frame rate. Be aware that changing the time steps to a smaller value will speed up your animation, so you're gonna to need to change certain settings in your simulation in order to get the fire looking the way you want. Once you have your simulation looking the way you want, go to the back of your node graph, right click and add an export VDB node. Plug that into the volume processing VDB and you should be good to go. Just make sure you have export temperature set so we can get full control over our shaders. Add a name and a file directory to your expert and make sure the number of frames is set to match your footage and the start frame is also set to one, given in Blender our start frame is always one. Go ahead and export that now and we'll jump into Blender to give it a little bit of a shader. Now that we're back in Blender, we need to go ahead and import our fire. Press F3 to open up the search option and type in open and you should see open VDB come up as one of the options. Go ahead and find your VDB files, which should be a whole list of files for every frame. Make sure you select them all and then click import open VDB. When you do it, you might not see anything, but remember we set our scale to 10. So it's actually just 10 times the size of what it should be. We'll simply go into the scale option and set this to 0.1 in order to bring it back down to earth. We also moved our simulation around a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and reposition it to match our ax. Once you have it positioned correctly, you should see that it aligns with your footage perfectly. Let's go ahead and create a fire shader for it, and then we'll export it for Nuke. Now I've already created a shader setup for this, but it's very simple and I'll walk you straight through it. The very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create three attribute info nodes, one named density, one named flames, and one named temperature. Using a math node, I'm just multiplying the density by two and then putting that into the density socket. I then removed the density attribute and changed the color to be a little bit darker than the default. Now, in order to get this cool fire texture, we can see that that's not actually what it looks like if it tries to just come out of Embergen. It actually will look something like this, which is just really low detail. So by using a tutorial from Iridicium, I learned that creating this little sandwich-like color ramp here gives you some really cool fire results that look much more realistic. I then did a mix color node with the method set to color, and I'm using that temperature socket to plug into a black body node, and that's my B socket for this mix color node. I set the factor to one and plug that into the emission color. I can then control the emission strength to be as bright or as dark as I want. I found six to be a good value, and then I'm all set up for this node. But that's a basic fire shader. I'm sure you could spend some more time to make it a little bit better. And at the end of the day, this also does come down to the resolution of your export from Embergen. But I'm pretty happy with these results and we'll refine them even further in the comp. Speaking of the comp, let's go ahead and prep this for export and jump into Nuke. The very first thing I'm gonna wanna do is go into my render settings and make sure transparent is checkmarked. Then in my output settings, I'm gonna make sure that whatever output format I'm using has set to RGBA. That means I'll have an alpha channel in my files, so it makes it easier to put it over my footage. Once your settings are all set up, go ahead and render out your footage and jump into Nuke for the composite. All right, now that we're in Nuke, I'm gonna show you my basic workflow for making this flaming ax really pop. The very first thing I wanna do though is show you what the element would look like if it was just over the footage by default. It looks like that. Not very impressive, I know, right? Well, don't worry, we'll do a couple things to make it look a lot better. The very first thing I did was I used a keyer node in order to key the fire. For some reason, the alpha channel that comes out of your smoke simulation doesn't give the fire an opacity. So by using a keyer node, blurring it a little bit, and plussing that back over, we're getting the alpha channel on our fire. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do is add this little bit of heat distortion here. The way I did that was pretty simple. I just used a blur node where I blurred my image a little bit, graded it up to be a little bit brighter. Then I used a noise texture with my element as a mask in order to create something that looks like this. Using an eye transform node allows me to distort my footage by a very small scale, like 1.03, in order to get this little heat distortion that wafts up from the flaming ax. I think this looks really cool and really helps sell the effect. Now what can we do to actually change the look of the fire? Because right now, this doesn't look that impressive. Well, the very first thing I'm gonna do is add some glow to it. If we look right here, adding some glow already really helps the fire look better. 
I'm simply using a basic glow node with the brightness toned down a little bit and the size turned super high, and I'm doing a basic merge A over B. Then to get some really realistic burning highlights and a nicer color, I use a glow exponential node. Feel free to play with your size, intensity, and fall off until you get something that you like. I'm also recoloring the fall off just a little bit and make sure to check mark glow only. Then I'm plussing that over my footage to get something that looks like this. Then the final touch was just to add a little bit of lens dirt, which again just helps integrate this fire into the scene a little bit more. Now I don't have time today to do a full tutorial on how I did this relighting. Honestly, that could be an entire video in it of itself, but if you really want a tutorial on that, make sure to leave a comment down below. But that's basically it. That's how you create a flaming axe in Blender using the new Geo Tracker and Ember Gen with a little bit of compositing and nuke. If you guys like this tutorial, go ahead and leave a like. I've been Alex from Level Up Plus VFX, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.